In this video, I want to summarize and explain why I tweeted out step-by-step -step phishing setup tutorials or courses are unethical. If you don't want to watch the whole video, the important TLDR points are that even if I find it unethical, it's not that bad. I don't want to really stir up any drama. I just find it a very interesting and thought-provoking discussion. And I only focus on phishing tutorials because there are very good reasons why I find them specifically unethical and not other hacking courses. But to really understand that, you probably have to watch this whole video. If you want to support these kind of videos, check out my merch over at shop.lifeoverflow.com. There you can purchase the font that I use for all my videos. And you can also check out hackstreet.io, which is an online training platform with hacking courses. Hopefully they are ethical. Anyway, let me start build up my argument. And first of all, we need to establish what do I even mean with unethical. And for that, maybe let's start with the difference between immoral and unethical. To be honest, I'm also not like a philosophy or grammar expert, I don't know. So I looked up some definitions in a dictionary and immoral is something where you preach a principle like a natural law. So when something is immoral, it's actually really, really bad. And so according to this dictionary, it can be unethical when you breach an established standard of conduct. So somebody just made up some rules and you break them, that's already unethical. Doesn't mean whether this rule even makes sense or not. But what do I mean now when I say something is unethical? Well, in this case, I think unethical can be defined as something that causes harm. But that explanation is a bit too simple because literally everything could cause harm in some way, in some context. So it's more about the balance between benefit and harm. And here already we are reaching two points that could make us disagree on this matter. First of all, the question is, how do you even measure harm and benefit? There are various ways how you could look at this. You can try to objectively measure it, albeit I think that's extremely difficult. And that already is extremely biased. So maybe we just disagree because I consider something more harmful than you, or I consider something more beneficial than you would. And the second problem is even if we could agree on some kind of objective measure for harm and benefit, we don't know how the weights like balance that scale. You could totally say like a little bit of harm is already so bad that it outweighs a lot of benefit or it has to be an extreme amount of harm compared to a little bit of benefit and only then we consider it overall harmful. So we might already completely disagree just based on these kind of principles. But regardless of that, I also hope that you can kind of like understand where I'm coming from. Now let's go back to the tweet because I then followed it up shortly after asking, can there even be unethical tutorials or unethical courses? And if so, what would that be? I was hoping that would cause some interesting discussions. And of course there were people that agreed with me that in principle there can be some unethical courses, but there were also many people that say, no, tutorials cannot be unethical. Unethical can only be the humans. And so of course, like maybe we can argue whether the, a tutorial itself is unethical or whether the course creator is may be unethical. But generally what some people were saying is that knowledge sharing can never be unethical. It's always about what a human then does. So let me respond to that criticism because I kind of agree. Knowledge should be free. And the question is, does a phishing step-by-step -step tutorial, if we block that, ban that, or censor that, is really hindering that knowledge to be out there? And I would argue no, because the real knowledge behind a phishing setup is really web development, server administration, and of course the idea itself, like what is even phishing. And I think all that still exists. On YouTube, you can find tons of web development tutorials. You can find lots of articles on how to set up a server. My whole YouTube channel, over 400 videos or so of just sharing hacking knowledge. Of course, I'm not against sharing any kind of knowledge. And so you should ask yourself, what does life overflow see in the difference between a step-by-step -step guide for phishing versus all the other hacking tutorials that are out there? Well, as I already mentioned in the beginning, it has something to do with harm. So let me explain why I find phishing step-by-step -step tutorials to be actually harmful. As far as I know, phishing and malware is the major way how companies and people get hacked. Of course, some hackers also use vulnerabilities, but I think on a large scale, generally it's phishing and like malware sent with attachments and stuff like that. 
and maybe I'm just biased because that's like the news bubble. You only hear about the phishing and the malware cases and it just makes me feel like 80 or 90 percent of all hacks are based on that. But there's also scientific data. There's this one paper that I always love to reference. It's called Data Breaches, Phishing or Malware, Understanding the Risk of Stolen Credentials. This is a paper co-authored by Google where they talk about the major ways how accounts get compromised. And just look at the data of how successful phishing is and keyloggers or malware is. Millions of people fall for phishing. It's a massive problem. And remember, for example, the Fappening incident? That was phishing. Script kiddies use phishing all the time and cause massive harm with it. And unfortunately, I speak here from experience because when I was a teenager, I was also introduced to some basic rat tutorial, how to set up a basic rat. And I started sending it to friends to hack them and stuff like this. This was very, very, very bad. First of all, my moral compass kind of didn't exist yet. I didn't understand the gravity of what I was doing back then. But on top of that, that was only possible because of basically step-by-step -step tutorials how to do that. I did not have the technical experience yet to really understand how a rat or malware works. I was just using somebody else's tool. Another question I got was how do even rat teamers learn how to do phishing exercises? And to be honest, it maybe sound a bit shitty, but I feel like if you are a professional with just general technology experience, you don't need a beginner step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm really talking about the easy to follow step-by-step -step tutorials for phishing. That is causing harm because it allows a mass amount of people to do the harm. Of course, an advanced tutorial might also be abused, but the harm is kind of limited in volume just because not that many people can understand it. And then the benefits outweigh that. The problem is really with the masses of it. And so just recently there was Besides Berlin, a conference where somebody talked about very advanced phishing technologies. Not only was this a professional environment, which generally also helps with kind of like mitigating the potential harm, but even if that gets uploaded to YouTube, I don't really see an issue here because it was really not a step-by-step -step guide for a basic bloody beginner to do it. If you are a professional, if you have basic web development experience, then you can kind of follow along and build this up yourself. And that's totally fine with me. Again, I believe the real harm comes just in being it a basic step-by-step -step tutorial. And so with that, let me summarize my standpoint. First of all, I believe that malware and phishing is the major reason for harm. It's the major way how accounts and companies and so forth get hacked. It causes an immense amount of harm, mostly because it's very successful. And it can especially cause more harm with step-by-step -step tutorials where people who have no technical understanding, like really making it available to the masses, you can have a 16 year old kid who has no idea what they are doing, follow a step-by-step -step guide and trying to fish their friends. This is, I think, what happens with these basic step-by-step -step tutorials. And second of all, I don't think not having step-by-step -step tutorials is censoring because the knowledge itself is still available. Web development, administration, and generally explanations how kind of like phishing works, like the idea behind it. With all of these three things, combine them together and you can build your own phishing. I'm not against hiding the knowledge. I'm just saying it's causing massive harm if it's accessible to script kiddies and complete beginners who have no clue what they are doing. And so now that you understand like how I built up my argument, we can try to apply this to other things. For example, Tiberius was asking me how I feel about lockpicking channels and lockpicking villages at conferences. And with lockpicking, for example, I don't really see the evidence that this is a real problem. Most burglaries, as far as I understand, is done through just prying open doors and windows. And what really matters the lock anyway if you could also just throw a stone into the window? Also, I know from experience that lockpicking is not that easy to learn. It also requires a lot of skill. So for me, that's very far away from actually being harmful. But I have one more interesting result that comes out of my belief system. This question that I ask whether there can be unethical tutorials. In the responses, I often followed it up asking, how do you feel about zero days? Full disclosure of zero days. Because I feel like most people would say, yeah, that's unethical to do because it causes a lot of harm. And so my follow up argument would have been, okay, what if I make a tutorial and, and so I was making the argument, what if I drop a full disclosure, a zero day, including a step-by-step -step tutorial, isn't that tutorial then unethical? And you know what's funny about this? I actually try to use this argument to convince people of my take. However, actually, I personally believe full disclosure is actually not that unethical. 
I know that sounds crazy, but I mentioned this previously a few times, I kind of lean towards full disclosure with a small asterisk. The question comes always down to how much harm can a zero day really do? And to get the obvious away, if there is a zero day that is extremely, extremely bad, imagine like a zero day in SSH or directly in Nginx or Apache 2 or a zero day, something like log4j. These zero days are so bad that yeah, if you release that too early, then you cause massive and massive amounts of harm and a little bit of benefits of attention and media coverage and whatever there is does not make up for that. So I agree there are zero days you shouldn't be releasing like that. But not every zero day is of that level. There are zero days that only matter in very certain specific contexts. And even if that zero day is then released, it will cause very localized some harm. You know, maybe one company gets hit or that one project is now vulnerable or so, but it doesn't cause the world to be on fire. And then I think the benefit of full disclosure, this immense pressure, the, the fixes need to be implemented quickly, the patches have to roll out fast, and you have to apply the patches fast. I, I feel like that's a benefit for the whole ecosystem that is actually positive. I know that sounds crazy and I understand if you fully disagree with that. I'm just telling you that for me, I feel like for most zero days, actually the harm is kind of small compared to the overall benefit to the whole ecosystem, this whole culture of releasing vulnerabilities. Also, I, I feel like that what has, has overall a positive effect. But again, I completely understand if you think that scale tips differently. Though, it's sometimes hard to estimate how much harm will actually come from a vulnerability. Sometimes you don't know like how widespread the systems really are. So generally, be a bit careful. It is risky to release a zero day, for example, to be for unpatched. And that's why responsible disclosure is probably the right way to go. But yeah, I think you'll get my point now. I think it's just an interesting property that arises out of my, what I try to have like a consistent model uh, for these kind of things. And you know, what is more important than whether we agree or disagree, it's to understand what would change my opinion. As you have seen me outlaying my argument and the major points why I consider phishing step-by-step -step tutorials to be unethical, it all comes down to this harm that I feel like is provable. I feel like these papers and all the news about different hacks of malware and phishing, I think that proves that it's harmful. Which means if you can prove phishing or malware are not a major issue anymore, or the benefit of these tutorials are actually extremely, extremely positive. Like these are two arguments you could try to make and that might change my opinion. And so if you are disagreeing with my take, I'm asking you, what is it that would change your opinion? What kind of evidence would you need that you agree with me? Write it in the comments and maybe I try to argue with you further. And towards the end, I just wanted to also mention because it's a little bit like subtweeting or sub YouTubing. The reason why I had this thought uh, was because I saw this ad on Twitter by Kuba Gretzky of about his evil jinx uh, course, but it's not a new opinion I have. I actually have a four year old video where I already shared my opinion about this. This just reminded me of it, okay? I'm not specifically like criticized this. I just saw that and that reminded me of the opinion I had a while back. And so I just shared this on Twitter because I thought it would be an interesting discussion. Also then I noticed that John Hammond also recently uploaded uh, videos about that, also step-by-step -step tutorial. And so you could think that I was also talking about him, but actually I've only seen this after I've already started talking about it. It was really the advertisement for the course that I saw that uh, triggered all of this, just full disclosure. And overall, it's important for me to understand that it's not a big deal. You know, when I say something is unethical, it can be this unethical, but it can be crazy illegally unethically, or it can be just be a little bit unethical. And that's how I feel about these courses. Like it's not that big of a deal. Like I don't need to burn down the world about this. You know, I don't want to cause any drama or criticism or John to take down this video or this course not to be sold anymore. That's not at all what I want. I'm not caring that much about it. I personally just find it a little bit unethical and something I personally wouldn't want to do, but it's also not a big deal and I'm like not, I'm not angry or anything like this. I think it's also totally okay to disagree with people. I think we do this way too little nowadays that we are not okay to disagree with people. It's okay to have friends because you largely agree, but you have maybe this one thing you disagree on. It's totally fine. For me personally, I just think it's an interesting discussion. It's very insightful. I can learn a lot and it helps me build like a consistent opinion. I have certain things that are important to me and based on that like my opinions arise and I hope I was able to explain to you where my foundation lays and why I consider phishing tutorials to be like 
slightly unethical, but only slightly. Remember, it's not, it's not a big deal, so no, let's not cause any drama over this. So if you want to keep supporting my bullshit tweets, I actually now have Twitter premium subscriber thing, so you can uh, give me money for the stupid tweets I write. Alternatively, you can also buy my shitty font in shop.lifeoverflow.com or sign up to hextree.io for more unethical hacking tutorials.